By Inferno's Light is the 113th episode of the television series Star Trek – Deep Space Nine, the 15th episode of the fifth season. The second half of a two-part episode, it is most notable for featuring the beginning of the Dominion invasion of the Alpha Quadrant. It features the return of several familiar faces, drawing on plot lines from the third season's Improbable Cause and The Die is Cast. The body of the fourth season, and fifth season opener, Apocalypse Rising. The episode premiered to almost 6 million viewers. Topic. Plot Having just come through the wormhole in the closing moments of the previous episode, the Dominion fleet momentarily pauses and faces off with DS9, USS Defiant, several runabouts, and Ghoul Dukat aboard a bird of prey. The fleet then heads to Cardassian space, with Dukat's bird of prey following them. Thinking that he is trying to make a heroic stand against the entire fleet, Kira tells him to stand down, but Dukat informs her that he has been secretly negotiating with the Dominion for several months now, and that the Dominion has accepted Cardassia as a member, with Dukat as the leader of the new government. At the internment camp, the prisoners are told of Cardassia's new allegiance, and all Cardassian's prisoners at the camp are set free. As Garrick walks off with the other Kardashians, he is told that he is to remain in prison, at the personal request of Dukat. Dukat himself appears in a video transmission to all of Cardassia, and pledges to expel Klingons and Maquis from Cardassian space and reclaim, "...all that was lost." Elam Garrick begins work on modifying the transmitter to contact the runabout in orbit over the internment camp, and Worf is selected as an opponent for Jemadar to practice hand-to-hand -hand combat. He is matched first against the youngest and least experienced of them, who scores an initial knockdown, but is eventually defeated. Meanwhile, Dukat has kept his promise to expel the Klingons, and they end up at DS9, where Gowron comes aboard to meet with Benjamin Sisko. Sisko suggests that they join to fight the real enemy, the Dominion, and Gowron agrees to reinstate the Kitimur Accords. At the camp, Worf's subsequent Jemadar opponents become successively older and more experienced, yet he continues to be victorious. Garrick begins to suffer from claustrophobia, and Bashir suspects that he will be unable to complete the transmitter modifications. Worf returns to the cell from a day of fighting, and Bashir tells him he has several broken ribs and, along with Martok, encourages him to stop fighting. Worf's refusal to give up inspires Garrick to overcome his fears and return to work. Even Martok is forced to grudgingly admire Garrick's bravery in facing his crippling bouts of claustrophobia head-on. Meanwhile, the station crew are awaiting reinforcements and trying to locate the changeling in their midst. Ducat contacts Sisko and encourages him to persuade the Federation to join the Dominion. Sisko refuses, and Ducat reminds him that he said he wanted to reclaim all lost Cardassians' territory which includes Deep Space Nine, as it was built by Kardashians although Sisko points out that it was built by Bajoran slave labor. Ignoring Dukat, Sisko deploys the Defiant and the Runabouts to fight the incoming joint Cardassians dominion fleet. The changeling Bashir is on one of the Runabouts, having incapacitated the crew. O'Brien detects a fleet of ships decloaking, and the crew is shocked to discover Romulan warbirds instead of the expected Dominion fleet. The Romulans ask for permission to join the Federation – Klingon fleet, and Sisko grants it. Back at the internment camp, as Worf is fighting the Jemadar commander, three Jemadar enter the cell and question the prisoners about the whereabouts of Garrick, who has not been seen in some time. They discover the loose wall panels, and come close to discovering Garrick when the prisoners successfully overpower their guards. In the combat ring, Worf is clearly defeated, but refuses to yield. 
Ikataka, the Jemadar commander, is impressed by Worf's determination to fight to what ultimately would be his death. Ikataka himself yields the fight, saying that he can't defeat Worf, only kill him, and Ikataka is uninterested in that. This enrages the Vorta, who orders Ikataka's immediate execution. As the troops turn their guns to Worf, Garrick manages to engage the transmitter, and they are beamed away to the orbiting runabout at the last second along with a Romulan captive. Once on the runabout, the real Bashir sends an urgent message to DS9. The crew realizes that the changeling Bashir is on a runabout and is carrying a bomb that he intends to detonate inside the sun, which will cause a supernova and incinerate DS9, Bior, and the combined Starfleet, Klingon, and Romulan forces. The Defiant takes the risky maneuver of engaging warp drive within a solar system, and pulls up alongside the runabout and engages the tractor beam, pulling the runabout away from the sun at the last minute. The bomb explodes, destroying the runabout and the changeling Bashir. Suddenly, the approaching Dominion fleet disappears from the sensors, and the crew realizes the fleet never left Cardassia. The changeling had been broadcasting fake warp signatures. Garrick, Worf, Bashir, and Martok are reunited with their friends and loved ones on the station, and Sisko finalizes the new peace treaty with the Klingons. The revised version calls for a permanent Klingon presence on DS9, and Sisko selects Martok to command those troops. <laughs>